I think uh, the great benefit of co-authoring is often actually what people ask about when they're worried about it. You know, they ask, well, what happens if you have a conflict? What happens if you disagree? And, you know, I think there's a lot of fun in agreeing. <laughs> there's a lot of fun <laughs> in, um, in making stuff up together. You know, it's probably the closest thing to playing the way I did when I was a kid is, is co-authoring. Um, but I think the best thing about it is when you do disagree and you're able to push each other to find something in the story that neither of you would have found on your own. Yeah, when Holly and I were writing together on Magisterium, mm -hmm. we had a agreement that if we couldn't agree on something, <laughs> then we would both have to abandon, if we were fighting, you know, over an idea and I said it should be A and she said it should be B, we had the agreement we would abandon A and B and try to work together to find C. And I think it's good to put that stuff aside so you're not end up fighting your corner and you're more working as a team to try to find a different corner. I feel like I learned a lot from writing with Cassie though because she is a big outliner. And I would like to be an outliner. <laughs> you learned you're not an outliner. <laughs> <laughs> and no, she was really helpful to like be forced to stick to an outline a little bit more. I learned a lot from Holly <laughs> as well. Uh, many things, many things. Now, uh, Holly's always focused on uh, theme, and so whenever I would come up with a an idea, what if they do this? She would question me about whether it fit with sort of the theme of the book and the and the mood of the book. I never thought I was focused on theme you until I worked. No, I, I, until that, until that I know. process, I never thought about it. Yeah, I know, it was really interesting. And so I would have to ask myself those mm. questions, which are very useful. <laughs> the authors that I want to write in my world. Um, mostly I've written with people who are really close friends of mine and have worked with me previous to writing in the world on critique, uh, being, you know, beta readers, being secondary, you know, readers, being, you know, people I bounce ideas off of, so they're already very familiar with the characters in the universe. Uh, Wesley was a change from that because um, I knew him through our mutual agent um, and so when I told my agent that I wanted to co-write um, The Eldest Curses, he kind of came up with a list of people for me that he thought might be potential matches and I kind of went through them and interviewed those people and I picked Wesley from the list. But, you know, I didn't know him before that. Um, so, yeah, um, so Tony, Dieter, Lizzie, and I were friends um, for a long time, and we liked talking about stories, and he was interested in doing this big field guide to fairies, and at the time I was working on my first novel, which is Tide, which is about fairies, and I thought, well, I really want you to do this project, so let me write some of these little things for you for this big illustrated book. And from there, it got to be a more complicated project, and it wound up being um, the five books that were about the field guide, and um, and then some more books. Uh, <laughs> but it was a, a project that really came out of our shared love of fairies, and um, I, our shared love specifically of Bran Pratt and Alan Lee's book, Fairies, um, which I think was a really foundational book for both of us. <laughs> it would have been nice if they had read the books that the, that the show was based on. Hmm? Single piece of advice. Single piece of advice. I mean, it's not advice. If they, they don't want to read the books, they don't have to read the books. No, I mean, I think my experience with Spider Rick really, um, you know, gave me the perspective that just someone who's good, like just be good. <laughs> like I, you know, I think that that is just the most important thing. And there's so many variables that I can't control for and that I 
honestly and probably in many ways don't understand. I think and Timothy so... Chalamet would make it look like a And he looks <laughs> like just a fine in eyeliner. <laughs> that is a fine eyeliner face. I don't, that's, I don't have to be neutral. <laughs> don't you think? Yeah, yeah. 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 Whoever! <laughs> just about finished with Queen of Nothing and so when I come back from tour I Queen of Nothing will be back also for me and so I'll be finishing that up and then I am out of contract uh, for the first time in a really long time so I have to figure out what I'm gonna do next so yeah exciting time for me <laughs> I've got a, quite a busy year. I've got um, the Red Scrolls of Magic, which is a the first in a series about um, the Magnus and Alec characters from the Shadowhunter world coming out in April. And then Chain of Gold, which is the first Last Hours book, which is a Shadowhunter series set in 1903. Deals with the kids of the characters from the Infernal Devices series that's coming out in November. This is not out of contract. <laughs> I'm not, boy am I not out of contract. <laughs> I'm one of the most in contract people I know. I've got quite a few years of uh, hard work. I've got the, um, so I've got Last Hours, I've got read the Eldest Curses, and then I also have my first adult book, which is called Sword Catcher, which is coming out in uh, two years. So I'm, you know, excited about that, starting to work on all of these projects. It's very, very exciting time, very busy time right now. Um, yeah, so Swordcatcher is the first in a series, um, and it takes place in a high fantasy world, so unlike say the mortal instruments it's not our world but with magic it's a completely invented secondary world like game of thrones um or the shannara chronicles and so you know it's been fun having to kind of make up my own world own rules own currency own countries customs all of that stuff and it is about a young boy who is uh kidnapped, taken to the palace in of um, his kingdom and forced to be the double for the prince of the country um, so that he there's someone to stand in for the prince at you know events where he might otherwise be assassinated um, and uh, that's why he's called the sword catcher he's meant to catch the blades that are meant for the prince and over the course of knowing and first befriending and then knowing the prince who is going to inherit the throne he starts to realize he's actually a pretty awful person and so he has to ask himself do I do anything to prevent this person who only I know is a terrible person from becoming the next king. So, um, recently I read Naomi Novik's Spinning Silver, which I absolutely adored. It was amazing. It was so good that I was reading it out of the plane and my eyes began to tear up at how good it was. Not because anything sad was happening. I was just like, it's so beautiful. Um, it's just really perfectly done, um, perfectly plotted, like beautiful language. I absolutely loved it. Um, and then uh, Lee Bardugo's King of Scars, which I'm so excited, came out and is this really amazing marriage of her sort of two Grishaverse series where we get to see a sort of interesting new direction and new people um, in a new light. And I uh, have been enjoying very, very much. I, you took my King of Scars, I was going to say King of Scars, so I, um, it is, it's very good, and I think it's a fun look at Nikolai, who's a super popular character from the first Grisha verse books, mm -hmm. you know, a, you know, prince a, and a, pirate. a prince and a pirate <laughs> and a privateer, so always good to get another, a closer look at, uh, at a criminally minded. I like that you object to my calling him a pirate. He's a privateer. He's a privateer, right? He's, he's, he's <laughs> a lot 
fucked up. I'm not a pirate. <laughs> Sorry, he's a pirate. Um, and I just ordered Angie Thomas's On the Come Up, which I'm super excited about reading because I loved The Hate You Give, and she is such a smart and incisive and funny writer. Probably pick uh, Swords Point by Ellen. No! <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, maybe War for the Oaks. War for the Oaks is great. Or The Perilous Guard. I love The Perilous Guard. These are classic fairy books. If you mm -hmm. haven't read them, you should check them out. Swords Point's not a fairy book, but it does take place in a secondary world and has this beautiful. Um, LGBT romance at the at the heart of it between these these two guys, both of whom are very very flawed, very fascinating characters. Whenever people are like, "There's no perfect book," I'm like, "But Swords Point." But Swords Point <laughs> is pretty close.